Vines are one of my favorite parts of my yard and garden. Vines are an excellent option for small gardens or really any gardens. They require relatively little space and often provide a large impact. Vines add vertical dimension and beauty, but knowing which one to plant where can be tricky. So in today's video, I'm going to share 10 of my favorite vines and let you know growing tips for each one. I'll cover common questions like, can this vine take full reflected Arizona sun? Should I plant this vine by my pool or will it be too messy? When can I expect flowers on this? What color are the flowers? How long does it bloom? How big does this vine get? I'll answer all these questions about 10 of my favorite vines in today's video. But if we haven't met before, my name is Angela from Growing in the Garden, and I love to share garden inspiration and helpful tips so you can be successful in your own garden. Vines are excellent options for small gardens because they provide big impact in a relatively little space. I love using vines in my garden to create shade, cover bare fences and walls, grow food, attract pollinators, and add beauty. We're going to start with the vine most people think of when they think of vines growing in Arizona, Bougainvillea. If you've lived in Arizona for very long, you've seen bougainvillea growing. Bright magenta and pink, bougainvilleas are tough plants. They can take reflected heat, they grow in alkaline soils, they are made for growing here in the low desert. Bougainvilleas can grow large. Depending on the variety, they can be up to 20 feet wide and 20 feet tall. Of course, you don't have to let it get that wide, you can keep it trimmed back. Growing bougainvillea in a container also helps to control its size. Some bougainvilleas will grow taller where others are more in a bush form. But a lot of bougainvilleas will do what you tell it to do. If you would like the bougainvillea to be more of a bush shape, you can keep it trimmed back. If you would like a long tall vine, you can also prune it that way. If you want bougainvilleas to grow vertically, you'll need to provide some support. What color are bougainvillea flowers? This is actually a trick question because bougainvillea flowers are actually white. They're that teeny flower in the middle of those bright colorful bracts. What we think of as the flower in bougainvillea are actually the bracts that surround that flower. The largest flush of bougainvillea blooms is from about October through May and they'll actually bloom on and off throughout the entire year. Is bougainvillea messy? Yes, bougainvilleas are definitely messy. They drop those papery bracts. Bougainvillea is very frost sensitive, so you don't want to prune it back too much during the winter. But in the spring, once danger of frost is passed, it's a good idea to give your bougainvillea a little trim to reinvigorate it and train those vines exactly how you want them to grow. Fertilize young plants with a balanced organic fertilizer each spring and fall. Fertilize established plants only occasionally. Water every 10 days during the summer and monthly in the winter. The next vine we're going to talk about is Cape Honeysuckle. So Cape Honeysuckle can actually be grown as a bush or a vine, but it does really well trellis. So if you'd like the look of Cape Honeysuckle and aren't sure what to do with some of those long limbs, go ahead and train it up against a wall or in an arbor. Cape Honeysuckle can be grown in full sun to partial shade. It does appreciate some afternoon shade during the hottest times of year. Cape Honeysuckle can grow between 3 and 20 feet tall and about 5 feet wide. It's very fast growing. If you would like Cape Honeysuckle to grow vertically, then you're going to need to provide support for those growing vines. Cape Honeysuckle flowers are bright red, orange, and they bloom all year long. Cape Honeysuckle attracts hummingbirds and bees. Is Cape Honeysuckle messy? A little bit messy throughout the year. It'll drop a few blooms and leaves pretty consistently. Cape Honeysuckle likes regular water. Cape Honeysuckle branches might die back in cold weather, but once they start to regrow in the spring, it's a great time to trim them back. I recently started growing roses and I love it. I only have a few that I've added. And they actually grow really well here in the low desert and are a great option for growing vertically. Give climbing roses plenty of sunlight. They grow in full sun. A little bit of afternoon shade is okay, but make sure that they get plenty of sun if you want plenty of blooms. Plant those roses in fertile, well-draining soil. They like really good soil amended with lots of compost. Plant a little bit higher than soil level and then mulch those roses really well to keep them from drying out and to help insulate them in the winter. Climbing roses can get up to 15 feet tall and 15 feet wide depending on the variety. Prune your climbing roses two times during the year. You're going to lightly prune in September or October and then a big pruning in January. And when you're growing roses vertically, you want to let those vertical canes grow as tall as you would like them before you begin pruning them. When you're pruning, you're going to be cutting back 
those branching stems. If you want your climbing roses to grow vertically, then you need to provide support for those growing vines. The roses come in a myriad of colors. Choose one that you like. Roses often bloom from spring until fall. The largest flush of color will be in the spring after that pruning, and then again after that September pruning in the fall. Climbing roses aren't too messy, but they are some work because it's important to keep the spent roses deadheaded. Plant bare root roses in January. Climbing roses do best with a regular feeding of balanced organic fertilizer every month during the growing season. Water roses deeply two or three times a week during the summer and less often during colder months. This next vine is one of my favorites. The first time I saw coral vine growing, it was at the demonstration garden for the master gardeners, and I couldn't believe it. I had no idea that something so beautiful would grow so well during the heat of the summer in Arizona. Coral vine thrives in full sun, but it will grow in partial shade. The more sun, the larger it grows. Coral vine tolerates hot areas, and it grows really well in our alkaline clay soil, but it definitely needs to be well draining. Coral vine can get up to 30 feet tall and 30 feet wide. It is a very fast grower. To grow coral vine vertically, provide support and it will grow right up and over that arbor. Coral vine flowers are typically pink, but they can often be a darker pink or white. Coral vine blooms put on a show in October. That's really when they shine. You'll get occasional blooms throughout the year all the way up until frost. When temperatures get cold, you're gonna see that coral vine die back. The foliage is frost sensitive at about 28 degrees, but the roots are hardy to about 20 degrees. Every spring, I cut my coral vine back and it regrows each year. In some other climates, it can be invasive, but here in the low desert, it just grows really well. Most of the year, coral vine is not messy. When it begins blooming, it starts to drop those flowers and it will drop leaves occasionally throughout the year. At the end of the season, when it dies back, it is pretty messy. Coral vine attracts bees like no other plant I've seen. If you're growing coral vine, you'll always hear that buzz of bees. In fact, you can see the bees behind me and see them buzzing around me right now. Apply a balanced organic fertilizer to young plants in early spring and mulch well. Established coral vine doesn't need any supplemental fertilizer. Mulch your plants well. Water established plants weekly during the summer and rainfall is typically enough during the winter. Lady Banks Rose is a vine that does really well here. It's a specific type of rose that tolerates harsher conditions than the other climbing roses that we talked about. Lady Banks Rose can get 20 feet wide and 20 feet tall, and it grows really well along fences, along trellises. You can plant Lady Banks Rose in full sun, even reflected western wall full sun. When you're planting Lady Banks Rose, choose an area that has well-draining soil, add compost to the area, and mulch well. Make sure when you plant that you're keeping that root ball a little bit higher than soil level. It definitely needs support as it grows. Lady Banks flowers are typically yellow or white. The bulk of the blooms for Lady Banks Rose is in April. Prune in the spring to remove the wood from last year's blooms and any crossing branches. Prune those spent canes all the way back to the base. Lady Banks Rose isn't messy other than when it drops its blooms, but it does require regular pruning to keep it in shape. Lady Banks Rose is hardy to about 25 degrees. Lady Banks Rose does best with a regular feeding of a balanced organic fertilizer every other month during the growing season. Lavender Starflower is another one of my favorite vines. Has beautiful lavender flowers and is green year round. Choose an area in full sun or partial shade to plant lavender starflower. Lavender starflower will grow a little bit better if it has some afternoon shade during the hottest months of the year. Choose an area with well draining fertile soil. Lavender starflower can get about six to 10 feet wide and tall. It's very fast growing. You can cut lavender starflower all the way back to just a few inches or a foot above the ground every few years to reinvigorate those vines. If you want to grow lavender starflower vertically, you need to give it something to climb. To train lavender starflower as a bush, you'll keep those branches trimmed back. The largest flush of those beautiful purple blooms will be in late spring, but you'll see blooms occasionally all through the year. Lavender starflower isn't messy and requires relatively little upkeep other than regular pruning a time or two throughout the year. It's hardy to about 28 degrees. It does best with a regular feeding of an organic fertilizer for acid-loving plants. 
two or three times a year. Here's another purple flowered vine, lilac vine. Lilac vine can grow in full sun or partial shade. Lilac vine isn't too picky about its soil. It grows well in native soil, but the soil must be well draining. Lilac vine can get 15 feet tall and 10 feet wide. It is very fast growing. If you want to grow lilac vine vertically, you need to provide support. It's excellent grown along a fence, an arbor, or a trellis. Lilac vine flowers are typically purple, but also white and pink. Those blooms will go from winter through spring. Lilac vine isn't too messy, but it will drop leaves seasonally. Prune in the spring after bloom to remove dead or damaged wood. Don't prune in the summer. Lilac vine is drought tolerant once established. Fertilize young plants with a balanced organic fertilizer each spring and fall. Lilac vine is hardy to about 20 degrees. Fertilize established plants only when needed. Passion fruit vine is another one of my favorite vines that grows well in Arizona. And a bonus is a lot of times you will get fruit from that passion fruit vine, depending on where you plant it and how old that vine is. Passion fruit vine grows in full sun, but you're gonna have more blooms and more fruit if you plant it in an area that gets partial shade or some afternoon shade. Passion fruit vines grow large. They can grow 10 to 20 feet wide and tall, and you definitely want to give them something to climb. Passion fruit vine grows best in deep, well-draining soil. Passion fruit vine flowers are beautiful. I've never seen anything like them. They typically come in the spring, but occasionally throughout the year, and those flowers will develop into fruit if it's pollinated. That fruit is ready once it falls to the ground. Passion fruit drops leaves regularly throughout the growing season. Passion fruit vines may take two or three years to begin developing fruit. It definitely needs regular water. If we get a hard freeze, it may die back. Passion fruit vine is hardy to about 30 degrees. You need to protect it from frost. Apply citrus fertilizer in the spring and each month while it's actively growing. Skyflower is another one of those vines that can be grown either as a bush or trained vertically. It, the vines are deep green and gorgeous and the flowers are so pretty. Although it's beautiful, skyflower is tough. It can be grown in full sun, even reflected sun, but it also tolerates partial shade. Skyflower is a fast grower and can get up to 25 feet tall and about 10 feet wide. Prune annually to keep it in its desired shape. If you want skyflower to grow vertically, give it something to climb. Skyflowers are typically purple, but there's also blue and white varieties. And skyflower blooms all spring and all through summer. Skyflower is actually not too messy. When cold temperatures come, it may lose all of its leaves, but throughout the year, it's relatively litter free. Skyflower is hardy to 25 degrees. Water skyflower weekly in the summer, but just every few weeks in the winter. Star jasmine is one of those vines that you might smell before you see. The flower's scent is intoxicating. They smell so good. Plant star jasmine in partial sun. Star jasmine definitely does best with afternoon shade. Star jasmine can get between eight and 20 feet tall and 20 feet wide. It requires minimal pruning. If you want star jasmine to climb, give it something to climb and those branches will twine. Provide support for star jasmine and it will twine up a trellis or fence. Star jasmine typically blooms in late spring, usually around April. Star jasmine does have some litter. It drops flowers after blooming and leaves occasionally throughout the year. Mulch star jasmine well to prevent the soil from drying out. Star jasmine can take a couple of years to get established, but once it's established, it should grow really well. Although we talked about 10 of my favorite vines, we didn't even cover all of the vines that grow well here in the low desert. Here are a few more of my favorites. Grapes, pink trumpet vine, grape ivy, primrose jasmine, cat claw vine, yellow orchid vine, and potato vine. Here are a few of my favorite annual plants that love to vine here in the low desert. Lufa, hyacinth vine, malabar spinach, Armenian cucumbers, cucumbers, tomatoes, cucamelon, sweet peas, cantaloupe, peas, tomatillos, and winter squash. If you plant those in your garden, be sure to give them something to climb. They will be happiest when they are grown vertically. Did I miss one of your favorites? Let me know in the comments which vines you're growing and which ones I should add to my garden. There are so many vines that thrive here in the low desert. 
Enjoy the journey as you find the right vine for the right location in your yard. Thank you so much for watching.